Oh, are you kidding me? Uh, oops. I thought I'd switch weapons. <laughs> Damn it! Died again! Okay, well, at least we're not that far behind. We're on the way. Our orders are to take off if we come under attack, so hurry the hell up! Roger that. We'll be there soon. Stay alert and follow orders. We're real close to the evacuation point. Let's move! I hate snorks. Okay. Fire at will. Snorks. Oh. Yeah, gun him down. Stone cold. Stone cold killers up in this bitch. What was that? Don't stop. Keep moving. Uh -huh. It's here. Run. Huh? Okay, run! Come on, medic. No, we lost someone. Guys, we still got this. Damn it. Sick. Oh, thanks again. Right, well, kind of gives me an unfair advantage. We're ready to go. Get in that chopper. I hope it was worth it. 
Get to the chopper! Sorry, I had to I had to make the joke. Yes, I am ready to leave this up. Helicopter just fly through a tree. One of the other pilots crashed. Well, there you go. As a reward for successfully completing his investigation, Diktyrev was offered a promotion to colonel and the position of mission coordinator. He declined the opportunity to work at the HQ and submitted a personal request to be sent to the zone as the USS permanent observer. The information about the development of psi devices obtained by Diktyrev alerted USS commanders. All the information gathered on ex-designated laboratories was removed from military archives and filed as top secret. All personnel working in the zone were ordered to prevent the disclosure of information about the laboratories at any cost. Several experimental samples were made on the basis of technical documents for item 62. Following a set of test trials, it was decided not to go ahead with large-scale deployment of the weapon due to the high cost of ammunition. Nonetheless, it would be reasonable to assume that further development of the Gauss rifle is ongoing. Sultan and his gang left the Skadask to do their shady business elsewhere after their attempts to capture the ship failed. The ensuing feeling of relative safety among stalkers led to a massive increase in the number of artifacts sold to Beard, causing his business to boom while the formerly quiet Skadovsk bar became as popular as the famous 100 Rounds in the bar, despite being almost in the center nice. of the zone. Unfortunately, it didn't last long. Bloodsuckers from the lair near the Skadovsk found the way to the ship. When bloodsucker attacks began to occur, even in broad daylight, it was decided to mount oh, an I didn't assault kill the, on the uh, lair. Bloodsuckers, that's Unfortunately, why. Oops. The hunters failed to advance deep into the tunnels, and soon afterwards, a wave of bloodsuckers annihilated all the ship's residents I feel in kind one of bad. fell swoop. A fragile balance was reached between freedom and duty squads at Yanov Station. Tired of the endless struggle, fighters of both factions started leaving their squads and joining the Free Stalkers. Nice. Professors Herman and Ozersky were forced to cut short their scientific research in the zone due to a lack of data. On returning to the outside world, the two scientists proceeded to engage in unrelated work. Gary's stories about the Army's fate scared stalkers away from Pripyat. The few who dared to venture into the city ran into inexplicable phenomena which added further dark strokes to an already gloomy picture of the dead city. Organized mercenary squads continue to be active in the zone. Their interest in the secret laboratories is becoming increasingly difficult for USS operatives to ignore. Attempts to establish the identity of the client who hired the mercenaries proved unsuccessful. The area around Yanov Station gained a reputation for being one of the most dangerous places in the zone. Fewer and fewer stalkers make it back from raids, many dying at the hands of mutants within view of the camp. One of those oh. missing if is I had Trapper, tracked on that, who set out to track down the chimera, on the chimera and killed him, he would have survived. Have his last hunt. Oh, I assume so many bad decisions. Zulu returned to Duty's main base at the Rostock plant. Nobody knows what he discussed with the leader of duty, General Veronin, but several days later he was spotted at the head of a large squad on its way to the center of the zone. Stalkers at Yanov Station still think of Vano now and again, recording his lightheartedness and skills. 
While some aspects of his life are usually up for debate, one thing is clear. With his luck, looking for a road to Pripyat was a big mistake. The list of casualties suffered in the course of Operation Fairway was amended with yet another name. Senior Lieutenant O.N. Sokolov died in the line of duty. A group of stalkers was forced to seek shelter on Noah's old barge during a particularly powerful emission. When the barge was attacked by a horde of snorks afterwards, stalkers were forced to concede that the barge was as good a defense against mutants as anything they'd seen. Even more astonishing was a litter of pseudo-dog puppies that Noah Yay. himself led into battle against the snorks. Noah. Having overcome his alcoholism, Cardin left the Skadafs. Stalkers said he went to look for his missing friends. Several days later, he returned, suffering from wounds and radiation poisoning. Oh, I didn't as tell soon him as his wounds were healed, he left the zone for the second or and like that. final time. And I never got the high-end tools. I guess I never really need them. Strelok passed on the information he obtained on his trip to the Chernobyl NPP to the USS commanders. This prompted the government to create a scientific institute for research of the Chernobyl anomalous area. Strelok took up the position of chief scientific consultant to the institute. When Colonel Kowalski, commander of the Stingray Group, returned from the zone, he was forced to explain the reasons for the failure of Operation Fairway. Following a dragged out investigation and the Brass's failed attempt to make him the fall guy, the Colonel was finally given an honorable discharge. I don't think I got a very good ending. <laughs> This has been Let's Play Stalker Call of Prepet with Expendable One. Thank you so much for watching. Um, hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, I'm going to be moving on to something, to something else soon. And I realize that I've been uploading a lot of stuff in very large sets. But I'm going to change that and actually do a full recording of me playing the game. And then split it into episodes. Rather than having three or four sets, or three or four episodes in a set, just a long series of episodes. So, thanks for watching.